everybody, this is Perch. Um, I got a good question in mail, and it's it's one that I, I'm going to have a lot of. There's some facts, but there's more anecdotal, more feelings involved in what I'm about to say. So take that with a grain of salt. This is my perspective. I'm going to try and talk through why I think the way I think, and you may have a different opinion, and that's fine. It, this is one area, though, where it's very hard to point to actual data and to say, oh, this is this is what's going on because here's data, here's stats that prove it. We don't really have that at our disposal this time. And this is around piracy. So the other disclaimer I guess I'll throw out here right out the gate, piracy is not legal. Um, you are breaking copyright. You are stealing something. Um, I'm not going to be your mom, though, and tell you bad for you. It's, it's, it's the choice you're making for yourself. I really hate channels and people who come on and, and want to, you know, read you the riot act. Uh, I, I mean, you know, maybe the, the companies themselves can do that. Your your close friends. I'm not your parent. I would advise always you pay for what you read. I, I do think that that's the right thing to do. I think that's the legal thing to do. But at the end of the day, it's it's your it's your risk, your time, your whatever being taken care of. Okay, so none of this video is, is advocating for pri piracy or is going to be a sermon against it. Okay. So I got this question, and it's a good one, and it says, is the internet and piracy to blame for comics not selling like they used to pre-2000s? I figure early to mid-2000s is when piracy got real popular. Also, can comics ever sell the same numbers like in the 90s when we have internet and piracy? Um, that's a very good question, and it, it, this is where this is where we have to kind of look at the data we have and, and start to make some assumptions. So first off, it is true. And statistically, here's here's a, a fact that we know. We know that piracy uh, grew significantly in the first, let's say, eight years of the new century. Between 2002 to 2008, kind of in that time frame, it's six years, uh, piracy exploded. It became easier to do. It became, there, there were sites you can go. It was very, very easy. Now, um, comic books were not quite as prevalent as, say, movies and music, in particular music. Music was was very easy to pirate, uh, movies less so, comics even less so, but all the same, there was a lot of attention. Now, what you also see is during that time period, you see a shift in the comic business. You've been seeing it in some of the numbers videos I've been doing. You see a shift away from ongoing series, away from kind of monthly comics to events and stunts. And when I say stunts, I don't mean it disparagingly. Hush, for example, I would call a stunt comic. And what I mean by that phrase, it, it feels like it's a negative phrase. I don't mean it that way. It's like you bring in Jim Lee to do an arc and you, you sell it as kind of this, you know, this big deal that, uh, that you know, these superstar creators are working on this book. It's not normal. It's not normal month by month things. And what you see are some pretty healthy comic sales, uh, particularly for those events, for things like Civil War and everything else. Now, that's fact. Those things are facts. Now, here's where the guesswork comes in. And I would say that in general, uh, I would say that things like Civil War or Secret Invasion or Identity Crisis or books like that, even Joss Whedon's Astonishing X-Men, they're easier to pirate. They're, they're, and what I mean by that is they're finite. It's a group of things. You're not, you know, putting up on a piracy site issue 213 or anything like that. You're not keeping up with any kind of monthly business. You've got a pretty finite event. So if you're if you're going to download something or pirate something, it's very easy for you to go and say, you know, download all of Civil War and you get it all in one go as opposed to, uh, you know, signing up to check every week and download comics or pirate things every week. There are certainly people who do that, but generally speaking, and, and here's where I'll slip back into some stats, people don't, you know, pirate, people who pirate content, pirate it when they want it. It's very much an on-demand kind of activity. It's not a scheduled thing. You don't, you don't wake up and you say, oh, it's Wednesday, new comic day. I'll go pirate some books. I mean, I'm sure some people do, but that's not the typical behavior. And you can see this in the download numbers. You can see this kind of in in the amount of cedars, you can see, you can just see it in the stats that, that people just, they go to pirate when they feel like it. And the other thing, if you go to some piracy sites and you look at what's there, you'll certainly see new comics there, you know, always every week, but then you very quickly get to, you know, the killing joke and Watchmen and civil war and secret wars. You get to the big guys. It's, it's really no different in this way. Piracy is a lot, a lot the same as you know, the, the high selling trades that you'd see at a bookstore. So 
what is you know what do I take from all this? Well, the comic numbers didn't slip during this time period. The the monthly ones did, but the the events and when I say the numbers, I mean the sales to comic shops, the sales of printed goods, it didn't drop during this time period. We did we saw that drop come later. Now I think there is an argument to be made to say that comic piracy was pretty pretty nascent. There wasn't there just wasn't as much of it during that time period. Piracy, I think, really expanded in comics around 2012 to 2016. That's where we saw a lot more piracy of comics starting to come up. And I think probably the biggest reason for that is it became much easier to just rip the digital copies and, and put them up. You didn't have to deal with scans. You didn't have to deal with any of that other kind of stuff. As, the, as more digital comic content got into the market, it was easier to steal that digital comic content. And in fact, today, if you, you know, if you go to piracy sites and you look at some of what's being offered there, it's, that's, what they're, that's what they're taking. And, and you know this by the fact that a lot of pirates uh, who grabbed, you know, people were pirating comics on pirates. Every time I say that, I always think like it's, the, it's, it's a straw hat crew off pirating comics. I don't know, my, my brain works weird. At any rate, it, it is, comics are, it, it's hard to say exactly historically, how much piracy hurt comics. I, I think piracy does definitely have a negative impact on comics. And, and why I say that, and everybody, whenever I say this, somebody will come in and goes, no, there's lots of evidence to show that piracy actually boosts sales. There isn't, though. There, 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 there is when it hits a certain tipping point. But piracy, and this has been true for movies, it's been true for music, uh, generally speaking, at lower numbers, piracy tends to hurt more than help. When something is popular and it starts to get more numbers, more, more viewers behind it, then people will pirate things and ultimately go in and, and maybe pay for it if they like it. There is evidence that that happens as well, particularly with music and movies. But we, we haven't seen as much of that with comics. As piracy has grown, comic sales have dropped. We haven't seen this kind of mythological, somebody is going to pirate something and then they're going to go to the comic shop if they like it and pay for it. We just, we don't see that behavior happening. And I think there's a number of reasons for that. The biggest of being, you know, with movies and with music, if you pirate something and you enjoy it and you decide to buy it, you, you don't have to leave your chair. Whereas with comics, you do. I mean, you can certainly go and you can go to Comixology, you can buy some of those digital comics, but even there, the user experience is tough. To flip people over. Most of the time, if people are, are, you know, downloading something and they're enjoying it and they want it for their shelf, that means they're going to have to get up, they have to get in the car, they're going to have to drive somewhere, they're going to have to pay for it, or maybe go to Amazon and buy it that way. I guess that would be easier, but it's just, it's not as quick as it is with movies and music. And so during that process, a lot of people just opt out. They just, they don't make it to the end. They don't actually succeed in, in buying that comic. Um, there's a, a, a second part to this question, which is also the answer. Does not selling comics in regular stores like Walmart, grocery stores, gas stations, etc., affect sales? Now here, absolutely, absolutely, it, it, there's zero doubt about absolutely it does. Comics being in fewer places over time is having a, a very detrimental effect to comic sales. And we see this in terms of kind of new readership coming in. We see it in how the uh, the current collector market is starting to age out a little bit. Not having the newsstand, not having grocery stores, Walmart, gas stations, etc. All these other places carry comics is having a very negative impact. And I would argue that that has a much more negative impact than piracy right now. Uh, I don't, I, like I said, I don't think piracy is, is necessarily taking away things, although I do think you could make an argument. I don't have stats, it's just anecdotally. I think you could make an argument that some of the lower selling titles, and we can use, for example, Hawkman, which if you look, I, and I, I spent some time, I, I'm, I'm pulling some numbers together to give you kind of a, at least more clear of a picture. Hawkman has very good download numbers off of piracy sites far exceeding. And the, the metric I've been using is saying, all right, how many copies are being sold in the stores versus how many, you know, basic uh, seeders, leechers are we getting off these comics? And even there, that's that's showing active connection. So that's that's not even the best metric. But what you see are books that are at the lower end, like Hawkman, tend to be downloaded dramatically more at a higher percentage than, say, Death Metal is. 
And what I mean by it is there's more people downloading death metal, but if you look at the you know, printed sales versus the piracy numbers, it's about two to three X, maybe more than that, but it's, it's you know, about two to three X the numbers are being pirated than sold. But when you look at something like Hawkman, it starts to get into the 10 to 20 X. It's just a much higher volume of things. It's, it's almost like the download numbers for Hawkman are similar to the download numbers for death metal, but obviously the actual sales not even in the same, you know, solar system. So that's, there's, there's, a, there's a lesson there. There's, there's something that we can glean from that. Um, but in general, I, I don't think piracy is hurting comics. I, I think it hurts it a bit. I think particularly it hurts titles that are on the bubble a lot. But I think that the bigger thing that's hurting comics is not being in the newsstand, not being in the grocery stores, not being in those places. I think the, the lack of the audience there is just a lot higher and a lot greater than whatever piracy is taking away. And that's just my opinion. I may be wrong. I just that that seems to be the bigger impact, the bigger negative driver to comics right now. But anyway, it's a very good question. I think piracy is one of those things where, especially where comics are concerned, where it's just not well understood what kind of impact it's having. And I think a lot of people get stopped at the well, piracy equals bad, or they get stopped at the piracy is helpful. Um, you know, when books are pirated, it means more eyeballs, which means people are getting into the shops. And I don't think either of those points of view are particularly correct. I think the numbers bear that out, but I'm not sure exactly the picture that we are getting. I just know that piracy is a, it, it's a tricky subject. You know, it's, it's one that I think triggers a lot of people very quickly. I think it's another area where people like to use it to kind of chastise others. And I don't think that's particularly helpful. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pieces to all this, but in general, you know, I, you should probably pay for your comics. You should, but I think the true problems in the industry, I don't think piracy is, is number one. Uh, I think that the lack of distribution, the lack of, of getting the comics out there. Now, by the way, you may argue, Hey, isn't piracy a way to distribute comics more? Um, it is, but with no metrics, no numbers, no stats, no incoming revenue from it, it's hard to know what to do with it. And I think that's that's the real challenge we have. But what do you think? These are, these are my opinions. So I could be completely off trying to answer your question and it's trying to talk through what's going on here. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe. Uh, I, I'm almost done. I almost got it out of my vocabulary about clicking any kind of bells. Don't click any bells. <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Most importantly, thanks for listening.